Today we're looking at the book of Habakkuk and it begins like this. O Lord, how long shall I cry and you will not hear? Even cry out to you violence and you will not save. I have cried out recently to God and accused him of not hearing. I have struggled over the years with a certain compulsive behaviour that I have failed to fully overcome with my own strength. I cry out to God with tears streaming down my face to rid me of this, yet I hear nothing back. I even go as far as accusing God of being silent and only speaking when what is being asked is in his interest, accusing him of only answering those of a certain ilk or spiritual standing, like the prophets of old. Why does he not appear to answer when we cry out in pain, in desperation against our struggles and the suffering of others? It seems unfair, even cruel, when God remains silent to your plea for help. What is a father to do with a son or a daughter who is learning to walk? Should he never encourage the child to stand from a crawling position? Should he forgo those intimate moments when a father coaxes his child to take his or her first few steps? Would a loving father respond to every request initiated through cries? I know as a father that not every cry from my children demanded an immediate response. I may have been teaching my children how to endure certain things, to learn patience, life skill that will hold them in good stead as they grow. I do all that because I love them. And the Bible says, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? God is given a gift that is far more precious than anything a loving parent could ever give their child. Faith. It is refined in a furnace. A blacksmith's workshop is not a place of comfort. It is grueling work to refine a weapon. There will be sweat. There will be tears. It will be labour intensive. But what is produced is finer and more precious than gold. You are God's power on earth. For God to wield you, you must become a substance that conducts and administers his awesome power. I look outside and I can see the bikes I bought my daughters. They are now lying on their side because the stabilizers are no longer there to hold them up. It appears to be a sorry sight for a bike to be in, but those bikes are now more versatile than they have ever been. They are able to navigate a narrower path, are less cumbersome and not as heavy as they once were. That is where God wants us to be, able to traverse the narrow paths in life, unhindered by the limitations we place on ourselves and with less load to carry. In, Habab in Habakkuk it says, Why does God show me iniquity and cause me to see troubles? So that you will grow to be resilient in the face of any opposition. Be rest assured that as a Christian, you will see and experience iniquities and troubles. Unlike those who do not believe, we feel the spiritual anguish of iniquities and troubles as well as the physical. We feel the suffering in our spirit and that is why we cry out to God, Oh my soul! God allows us to see these iniquities and troubles to highlight that no human power can overcome such things. We wrestle not against flesh and blood but principalities in the heavenly realms. How does God prepare a people to fight against a merciless enemy whose sole purpose is to see humanity destroyed and tortured for all eternity? God wants to develop eyes to see what lies beyond the natural, beyond the physical. The eyes are a lamp to our body 
and if it only gets accustomed to seeing only the visible spectrum of light, then it will never see into and beyond the invisible spectrum of light, the supernatural. God wants the to build a faith in us that can see beyond the confines of a broken world, to see with eyes that dwells in the everlasting. Jesus said, Blessed are those who have not seen yet believed. Though we may not see an end to our suffering or the suffering of others, we must continue to believe that all will be well and that we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Those who have not seen the end of suffering yet believe that God is still good that he will restore peace and establish a kingdom that will never end, are truly blessed. Remember the words of Revelation 21 verse 4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things have passed away. Finally, it is okay to cry out to God. What is important is how we respond when we get no immediate response or the expected answer. We live by faith and not by human eyes. The righteous shall live by faith, the scripture tells us. We have been made righteous by the blood of Christ that cleansed us from all our iniquities and destroyed the enemy's power over us. The cross looms in front of us casting a shadow over all our troubles, struggles and iniquities. Take your eyes off the fleeting shadows and turn them to the eternal. Today, turn your face to Jesus. God bless you. Amen.